Purple Heart Homes presents Putting the Pieces Back Together, a forum for veterans and the community to connect. Here are your hosts, veterans John Galena and Brad Borders. Well, well, well. Welcome back, John Galena. Oh, wait, no, it's not. It's not. John, does John Galena even host this show anymore? Nope, he's gone. Out of here. Huh? I don't even know Bye. what happened to him. Does, <laughs> does he even live in Statesville anymore? Every week we don't know. he's gone somewhere. And, uh, incognito. And, incognito. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, hey, welcome to Putting the Pieces Back Together, presented by Purple Heart Homes. Purple Heart Homes is a 501c3 based out of Statesville, North Carolina, but we do work nationally to ensure that veterans have safe and accessible homes. And we do our best to solve veteran homelessness, and uh, we are currently manufacturing tiny homes, and we have big news on that front uh, with some uh, certification that happened uh, last week. It's really, really big. And filling in for uh, John is uh, the metal queen herself, uh, Karen Fisher, and the crowd went wild. Ring the bell. Oh, where's the bell? Where's the bell? Oh, there it is. Hey, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you. I'm so you, glad to be here. You have an awesome guest with you today as well. I do. I have Davidson Fisher, who's my son. Say hello. Uh, hi. Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, hi. Hey, it's his, it's his, it's his uh, first official day of summer break, so I'm already putting him to work. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. He's a radio personality, too. I hear Woody and Wilcox are going to have him on next week, so uh, that'll be awesome. So Davidson looks excited <laughs> yeah. about that. We can make that happen, He's so confused. Buddy. He's like, yeah. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. uh, well, welcome back, everybody, from Memorial Day. Uh, we hope, uh, I like to tell people to have a, a uh, you know, when you say happy Memorial Day, yeah. that's kind of, uh, I'm, not that's, sure. I'm not sure that that fits very well. So I always tell people to have a meaningful Memorial Day. That's good. Uh, a lot of folks I know were uh, out doing uh, s- completely stupid but not utterly pointless workouts yesterday, doing hard things on Memorial Day uh, to or remember not, those. Or maybe some of us were. Chilling inside, while it rained. Okay. Netflix and chill. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That yeah. was happening. Um, and I, you know, Memorial Day's. Uh, you know, for those of us that served, Memorial Day's kind of a weird, uh, weird holiday. Um, it is the beginning of summer, but it also brings up a lot of memories. And uh, um, yesterday happened to be the twelfth um, uh, anniversary of of the loss of three friends. Um, that um, that I served with um, at Fort Bragg, and oh uh, it coincided with, and it was funny because when I um, I got word, I was in Greencastle, Pennsylvania, and I just uh, participated in a memorial service for one, another soldier that we lost, a guy named Benjamin Franklin Bittner, oh. uh, and he would, man, was born on the 4th of July, uh-huh. oddly. Uh, wow. We lost him in Afghanistan, and we were leaving Greencastle, Pennsylvania, me and three other soldiers, we were leaving Greencastle, Pennsylvania the day after his memorial, and then we get the phone call that we had just um, uh, lost three more. And oh, so that, that ensued six weeks of yeah. probably, uh, you know, some of the most difficult uh, <laughs> stuff that we had done, uh, you know, just stateside. You know, I, I tell everybody my deployments weren't, um, you know, weren't, they, they were hard, but the stateside stuff for me was, was the hardest. And I, so, I bet. Um, so anyhow, uh, on Memorial Day, I like to reflect a little bit, but I also like to uh, uh, like to have uh, an opportunity to be thankful and experience the joy of being able to live um, and spend time with my wife and my family and, yeah, and, and our freedoms. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Taking full advantage. Um, I don't know if you rode through Troutman this weekend or not, but on Main Street going through Troutman, they had all the flags lined up. Oh, did they really? And so it was all over social media. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot of neat stuff. Richard's Coffee Shop down in Mooresville, they did a they did a big ruck down there. And yeah. so there was yeah. uh, a the Exchange hundred, Club. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the Exchange Club did a like a hundred person, three mile ruck and uh uh, looked like that was a really good time, and yes. so I, I'm really thankful that people uh, still take the time to uh, uh, to remember Memorial Day and have make it a meaningful day. That's so, a really good way to put it. I think I'll I'll adopt that. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, well, big doings last week for us at Purple Heart Homes. Uh-huh. Uh, you can find out more about us at phhusa.org. Um, we had a tiny home build going on at ye old Charlotte Motor Speedway. Um, which was, um, man, that's a circus down there. Did you get down there I at all? No. Oh, my no, heavens, I stay far man. away Holy from the rain. Holy cow. We went down, crazy. I think, Thursday. And uh, so what we had was we we transported the base plate for a tiny home, yep. 320 square foot tiny home, put it in the, uh, the fan section right out in front of the stadium, and then we had volunteers come in to, to deck it and then 
uh, build the walls and then put the OSB on and, and wrap it in our cool Purple Heart Homes house wrap. And uh, it was really fantastic until all the rain came. I was wondering about that. I, I, I was wondering, but I, was this a situation where just anyone could walk up and, so you know, hammer had, some nails in? Or? We had organized two days where Fox Sports and their crew came in oh, okay. um, out of Charlotte. They have a big office in Charlotte, a big production facility in Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And they came out and then Truist Bank. Right. Um, okay. They came out uh, right. on both days, and then it was kind of open to the public. And then we had like uh, Troops Hall Junk uh, oh, was Chris a company. Benson. Yeah. Yes. Troops Hall Junk came out, and uh, yeah, they're awesome. Oh, they, uh, oh, the South Charlotte branch. That's of correct. Troops. Okay. They came so out and did now, some right. stuff and put some stuff on the Facebooks and the Instagrams <laughs> and, the web, and all and the interwebs. internets. Yeah, and the webs. Uh-huh. So yeah, it was pretty neat. And so, uh, and it that kind of that kind of. Uh, closes out a really busy time for us john and and devin and lamar um are all down in puerto rico celebrating the first project that we completed in puerto rico which is uh, they were so excited yeah that's really big and so they're down there celebrating that and i think they come back either today or tomorrow i have no idea because everybody's so busy well lamar is my office mate and he's been gone too much and i get really down when he's not around you have a little uh anxiety when he's I not get around sad. he has a very calming presence he does he does yeah his yeah. voice he's my partner yeah he's an awesome guy my work bff that's right mm-hmm. that's right so <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, anyhow, we have got uh, a, a big summer headed for us and a lot of veterans that need need help. And uh, uh, we're grateful for everybody's support of what we do. And uh, yes. we have um, we have an awesome show um, on tap for you today. Um, we've got Matt Reyes here. Matt is a uh, West Point grad and an Army veteran. Uh, and I'm going to let him introduce himself. But he has three uh, guests, and he is, uh, I've been told he is the field force liaison for West Point. If you don't know what Where's West Point cape? is. Yeah, that's right. Field force liaison. He's an X-Man, right? And so, uh, Matt, it's Matt's second time on the show. We're really glad you're here. And uh, if you would, uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about your background. And then you've got three guests in here with you today that I'm really excited about getting to know. Awesome. Well, thank, thanks so much, Brad. Thanks for having me again. Um, you know, I, I guess I didn't mess up bad enough last time for you to like. You, you, you not, did not mess not, up Not have all. me back. But yeah. uh, as, as Brad said, I'm Matt Reyes, and uh, I, I'm just grateful to be here. I am a West Point 1989 grad. Um, I've been in the local area since I got out of the military in 94. Uh, I lived in Statesville for about 18 of those years and then moved down to Mooresville. And so, as you said, I am the field force liaison now in the military. I was a field artillery officer. Mm, Lord Um, help us. Yeah. More. (laughs) King of battle. Yeah. Yeah. And John Galena now, if he's listening, he's just having uh, shivers and chills and (laughs) and just uh, all giddy. That's right. Yeah. John being a 13 Bravo. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I first, you know, I first found out about Purple Heart Homes when I met Dale Beatty outside Walmart in Statesville. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Um, He told me a little about what they were doing. This is back in 2009. Wow. Um, And he told me a little about Purple Heart Homes and what what was going on with with that. And I I really, it resonated with me because I'm also in real estate. So I've been in real estate for 20 years. Um, But back back in the Army, 13 series, um, field artillery. I served in Desert Storm uh, with the 101st Airborne. And part of the... uh, Got to got to participate in the largest, longest helicopter operation in military history. No kidding. Wow. Yeah. So the movement of the 101st Airborne up into the Euphrates River Valley in um, in Iraq was the largest helicopter movement ever. In no kidding. History. Like how so, far was it? So it was about 100 miles yeah. north into the Euphrates Valley. And the 3rd Brigade of the 101st, the Rakasans. Um, some some of our Ura. listeners will really relate to that. <laughs> yeah. um, was the main effort for that, but they also moved. They moved the equivalent of about two brigades. Um, All the in, uh, matter, in a matter of a few hours. Yeah. Wow. A hundred miles north Air into mobile. the Euphrates Valley. Yeah. yeah wow. Totally. So. Sight yeah. see. Yeah. It was. It was a really. Looking back, it was a really cool operation. Yeah. Um, we took minimal casualties, so mm-hmm. that's always that's always great when, yeah. when you can say that. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, you know, to fast forward, I'm really, really grateful for, you know, really what the Army has done for both myself 
and my family. Um, you know, I, I was a, I grew up in New York City. You know, um, not of real uh, let's let's say not rich. <laughs> you know, not of not of um, you know. What West Point was my opportunity it was a great opportunity for me to go to college. I was the first. I was the first in my family to go to college. And I, so I showed up at West Point really not knowing much about what it was all about. I knew I, I, I had a, I had, I was very service oriented. I enjoyed service. Um, and so I knew defending the country and serving the country was something that was interesting to me, but you know, I, I really didn't know what that was all about. So I showed up at West Point and you know, my life was completely changed by the, by the process and the, um, what, what you go through at West Point, um, mm -hmm. for the better. And, you know, fast, I met my wife there. She's class of 90. Okay. Um, and then my son, my son, who's at Ranger School right now. Oh, my gosh. Um, 62 worst days of your <laughs> life. Yeah. Is, is uh, oh. yeah, like, we're hoping he's going to get a break at the end of this week. Um, he's class of 2016. Yeah. And around 2012, when he applied, I started to get into field force work. Um, and I And I got on several different congressional committees that help with nominations yeah and right now i'm on senator uh senator tom tillis i've worked with him for about six years now okay and, mm -hmm. and i work with then representative bud and for oh, about four years and now he's a senator so i'm on both of those committees the two senators i serve on those committees to interview candidates for nominations because to, in order to get into any service academy and those those committees are across all the service academies. In order to get into any of them, you need either a congressional nomination or one of several other types of nominations, one of which is being enlisted, which is which is not known, um, not well known. You can be enlisted and apply to West Point or oh. or any of the academies. And there's a there's a there's a group of people every year that gets in that way. Yeah. They get a commander's recommendation. And we had we had we had, I helped three different candidates this year that route, mm -hmm. including my daughter, Maria, who I'm yeah. getting ready to introduce. Um, and she can talk a little about her, how her path went. Um, so, so what inspired me was just the, um, I get, it's, it's one of those things that I, I'm very passionate about helping candidates because I knew so little. And it is a really daunting process. Like there's a lot you have to do to, to make it work for yourself. Um, and so one of the, one of the things that fills that gap and, and as a veteran, you know what I'm talking about. There's, when you get out of the service, there's kind of a gap. Like there's a, mm -hmm. sometimes you feel like sometimes you're searching for a little bit of meaning mm -hmm. yeah. and helping candidates fills that gap for me. So, cool. yeah. okay. so, so the more, the more people find out about what I'm doing the more that gap is filled. So it's completely volunteer work. And, That's awesome. And it's the most favorite volunteer work I do. And you have a cool title. Yeah, you do have a cool title. <laughs> yeah. Force and, 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 and it fulfills that, that need for, it for service. It uh, I get that. That That's, need for service. Yes. Along with just one other thing, I, I work with Patriot Military Family Foundation and Rick mm, Cantwell yes. and that group. Okay. Um, yeah, great they, organization. Yeah, so but let me let me move on and introduce who we well, have here. Let's hold on. We got to okay, sure. we got to head into a break here in just about thirty seconds, and so uh, we'll save that for okay. when we come back. Uh, when we come back from break, uh, Karen's going to do the project of the week. Devil Dog Devin is not here. I'm sure he's somewhere in Puerto Rico, speaking very loudly <laughs> and uh, <laughs> using his outside voice. And so uh, mm. uh, Karen's going to come back with the project of the week. We're going to introduce. Um, these three five young people uh, that are heading to West Point this summer to begin their military career and get their uh, education. And so uh, we're really grateful that everybody's tuning in this morning. Uh, we'll be back in about three minutes. You're listening to Putting the Pieces Back Together, presented by Purple Heart Homes. Okie doke. morning uh you're with purple heart homes yeah yep uh if you want to learn a little bit more about purple heart homes go to phhusa.org and we are here today with some great guests regarding west point putting the pieces back together awesome wow you are a broadcast professional man do not try this at home that is fantastic thank you karen hey <laughs> filling welcome. in for 
uh, John Galena and Devil Dog Devin. See, we only need Double one. Duty. We only need one person to fill in for those two guys. <laughs> can I? Can I request my pay to be doubled? Yes, you can. I'm going to approve that right now since John's not here. Thank Consider you. I'm signing it. I'll yes, and now, it. all right, okay. and there you go. We're Karen set. just got a double in pay. That's Yay. awesome. So, yes. uh, hey, uh, well, welcome back. We're here with Matt Reyes and a cr- cast of characters that are all headed to. Uh, Lovely place up in New York uh, this summer, I believe, uh, called West Point. I've actually been there. Um, I did not attend school there because I graduated from high school with a 2.0000001 (laughs) just by the old skin of the teeth there. And uh, West Point was not interested in me at all. But uh, (laughs) but it is a uh, it is a remarkable geographic location uh, overlooking the. Potomac River? Hudson. Hudson. Man, daggum it. All right. So the Hudson River, but it is uh, it is a fabulous location. It looks like to me when I got there, um, it, I thought I was at like Harry, in a Harry Potter book. That's what I thought. <laughs> right. Like uh, giant stones right. stacked up on top of each other that Definitely. people live inside. So yeah. uh, it's fantastic. So uh, anyhow, um, hey, Matt, can you um, provide us a overview of, um, oh, wait a minute before we do that. Project of the week. Thanks, you, Karen's you tapping. Last week too. The, I know, Stop. Karen's tap. Stop it! All right. Stop. <laughs> hey, everybody! It's Karen Fisher with the project of the week, the most anticipated segment of the Hello? show, except well, for when I forget it. Okay, that's okay. I forgive you. Okay, thank you. You're loved. <laughs> Um, I want to really quick introduce, before I get into that, I want to introduce Davidson Fisher here. He has a connection to West Point. He's my son. Um, Davidson, you want to tell him a little bit about your connection with West Point? Uh, hello, my name is Davidson, and uh, my great uncle Danny went to West Point. Uh, he was a lieutenant colonel, um, and he served in Vietnam with intelligence. Uh, he knows five languages. Whoa! Yeah. Um, he was a professor at West Point. He taught uh, Spanish. Wow! For about like, ten years. That is awesome. Are you going to go to West Point? I don't think so. No. I don't <laughs> think so. Okay. All right. Well, well, maybe, yeah, maybe, that's right. Maybe we'll change your mind. Hey, we've got a uh, field force liaison here that can help you with that decision. <laughs> so uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which side you want to go? Shoot me a text. There you go. There you go. He's got his ideas about enlisting that we're we're talking about. So, but he's awesome. he's got some time to go. He's only fourteen. That's right. So, my project of the week um, is a U.S. Army veteran in Mooresville. Actually, this is one of my projects. Believe it or not, um, he served in um, Operation Enduring Freedom, and um, he was in a horrible, horrible accident that created severe damage to one of his legs, mm. um, broke his femur in half. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Um, he's missing his patella. He's got severe nerve damage, and he has had surgery after surgery after surgery. Um, the, that, that, that's, that's good that, you know, he was able to get these surgeries and, and continue on, but the, the bad news is is he is guaranteed pretty much to be wheelchair bound mm. in the next couple of years probably wow. so um uh when i met him he really had just a lot of trouble walking um you could tell he was in pain mm. <laughs> but um he lives in a sort of a small house and it kind of you know weaves around and his bathroom was kind of tucked in the corner of his house and it was very small and he was having a really hard time with the step-in tub mm-hmm. and we um partnered up with we build charlotte our friend joe sherlock oh my uh, goodness what done, a great guy he is amazing he's yeah. one of my favorites he um he's helped me with several of my projects but um he came in and he decided he was going to help us um with modifying the bathroom and that's one thing modifying the bathroom so we gave him a walk-in shower like we normally do um new tile throughout but the biggest thing was trying to get him into the bathroom when he is in his wheelchair Mm -hmm. so we widened his doorway and we Mm -hmm. put a very 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 cool barn door yeah that is very cool so i think we have a couple of pictures that maybe there we go yeah if you're watching on facebook you can see those pictures and uh that's yep. really, really cool. Isn't barn doors it? are great. If you don't know what a barn door is, it's a door. It's basically a yep. sliding door that slides along the wall and creates a lot of space. It, right. And, um, it, and when you, uh, you know, it didn't take up, you know, when you open it, it didn't take up any more space when yeah, you opened it. So it's absolutely perfect. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. And so when you can't move around in your house and you can't do basic stuff like get in and out of the bathroom, it is a... Uh, source of stress and anxiety for people and um, that's one of the reasons that's one of the reasons why we do this is to it's not just about fixing the house it's about helping the person that lives in the house um, 
yeah. to not be in a state to where they're anxious about yeah. the place that they're living. Also, too, it can be very unsafe if everything is too crowded and tight yes. and um, and you end up falling and getting hurt worse. Yeah, and, and Joe actually put the, um, the, the the faucet or the water connections outside of the shower. Oh, that's so very cool. So he could cool. just wheel in, oh, turn it on, and stick cool. his hand and without, how, without having to get inside. And What a great idea. I know. Wasn't that cool? Yeah, and Joe has done, I don't know how many projects he's done uh, for us he's now. He's fantastic. It's been, yeah. And he, he, got a, he got me taken care of. So. Yeah, that is fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Karen. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. If you sure. want to find out how you can help more veterans... Uh, and that's, that's something that interests you. You can go to phhusa.org and take a look at what we're doing. Find out maybe about our events that are coming up or ways that you can give back and uh, volunteer in both in uh, volunteering and in finances. So uh, we'd really appreciate you taking a look at that. So, um, hey, well, we're joined as I started earlier and forgot about Karen, which was <laughs> terrible. Um, we are joined by Matt Reyes and three uh, um, amazing young people that are headed off to West Point this summer. Um, Matt, give us, um, um, if you could, just introduce uh, these fine young people and tell us who they are and, um, man, and, and how awesome they are. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So from left to right, um, we have Abigail Marks, who uh, is a senior, just graduated from Christ the King High School. And my daughter to her uh, left is Maria Reyes, affectionately known as G.I. Rhea. Uh, she'll tell you why she's G.I. Rhea in a minute. She graduated from Christ the King two years ago. Okay. And to her left is Jeffrey Saitong, uh, who is also a graduated senior from Christ the King High School. So just to give you an idea, you heard Christ the King three times. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. They they graduated, I think it was 94 seniors this year. Uh, okay. And two of them are going to West Point and then one from uh, two years ago. So so they're doing really great work. Did uh, the Navy guys try to scoop up any of these fine young people <laughs> uh, to get them to go to Annapolis? I don't know. Did any of you apply to 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 navy good for you not that they not that they're willing to admit to yeah that's right we love our navy folks beat navy yeah <laughs> go army beat navy so we don't have any so, navy representation here that's today right. yeah, so like we, a, so we can beat up that's on right, them, right? That we can, uh, for sure so so three really um fine fine outstanding candidates uh and now accept these to West Point that'll head off to cadet basic training uh, at the end of June. <laughs> That'll That's be amazing. Awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> so, um, Abigail, what um, made you m made you choose West Point? So I think the biggest factor in really making the decision to go there for me was the summer leadership experience that ah, I went to. Okay. So I really got like a true taste of cadet life. And I just loved almost every aspect of it. The structure, even waking up early makes you feel more productive, just having that. And then the service aspect, really being able to give back to my country is okay. huge. Do you have veterans in your family? Uh, my great grandfather was in the Navy. Okay. But that's okay. it. All right. Were you planning on enlisting or was, was it something you so wanted to do at West Point? I, had a backup plan if I didn't get into West Point of ROTC. So okay. I got an ROTC scholarship actually. Oh, which wow. I turned down for West Point. Oh. Okay, I don't blame you. Smart move. <laughs> Smart move. That's good. That's good. Uh, G G G -R -E -A. That's right. G -R -E -A. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to? Uh, well, really, it's having gone to a college already i'm i'm a sophomore in college right now okay um i didn't really i didn't choose west point right out of high school just i actually didn't really i didn't really want to quite honestly and i de i developed a want to later okay um but having already been to a civilian college and then also having gone through regular basic training with the army okay and gone through advanced individual training um as a 13 juliet Artillery. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's right. <laughs> um, in the family. So really like people would join people join the army for all different types of reasons mm -hmm. and people also go to college for all the type all different types of reasons and um, I'm really just looking to see how the combination of those two manifests and that's really what I'm most excited about meeting all the new people. Right. That's that amazing. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, so what are some challenges that Jeffrey what are some challenges that you think you're going to face? Oh, um, I think the biggest challenge for me is really going to be like physically, you know, okay. like I feel like they're going to try to, you know, just 
punch at me, you know, like with like the, especially like the first six you weeks ever of training. Punched before? No, <laughs> I just don't think. I don't know. But yeah, just you know, like the amount of physical demands they're gonna give me, I feel like that's really gonna be a challenge, especially for the first six weeks. Um, I'm hoping to jump over that quickly and you know just make it as best as I can and make the most of it. So you know, just be a better person. Yeah. Okay. Oh, awesome. Very good. That's fantastic. And mm-hmm. so Matt, when 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 do they report um, for duty? July, uh, June. Excuse me, June 26th. Oh, correct. Yes. So coming June up 26th. in just a few weeks. In just a few in weeks. In just a few weeks. They'll me, be thrown into the fire. Yeah. <laughs> so how does um, how does West Point combine this? Uh, a pretty it's a rigorous academic program um, and military training and how do they combine that with leadership development great like, question Brad so probably the easiest way to answer that is to talk about the mission so the US military Academy at West Point's mission is to educate train and inspire the Corps of Cadets so that each graduate is a commissioned leader of character committed to the values of duty honor country and prepared for a career of pr- professional excellence and service to the nation as an officer in the United States Army. And really there are four pillars when it comes to fulfilling that mission. You have character development, academic excellence, military leadership, and physical development. And so it's a very full schedule um, when it comes to, because academically, not only do you have to fulfill the, the, the normal college requirements, Everyone that graduates has a a very strong background in engineering, Mm -hmm. Um, but then you major in a a, a particular field, and then you also need your military classes that help teach you how the military functions and military science and some things around that like psychology and law. Um, So military leadership, you know, there's, there's those courses, but there's also drill and ceremony and a plethora of other opportunities. <laughs> opportunities, I love how you <laughs> To <put> excel <laughs> yeah, um, to <laughs> in different areas. So it's very regimented. It, it's very well scheduled and planned. And so it, 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 it's a very full schedule for it the kiddos. Sounds like a full load from really, day one. Totally. Yeah. Really, one of the things I enjoyed the most was the regimentation. Mm-hmm. I, found, I found that worked really well for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, and, and the fact that you said getting up early gets you more motivated, that that you, you're probably going to be a really good cadet there. Because yeah. <laughs> I don't know many teenagers that would say that. That's right. I don't know I'm, if I would say that. I like getting up early in the morning. I like that I very don't. much. So, um, what do you, guys, what do you expect um, for, you know, what do you, your expectations as far as the academic rigors that are headed your way? I mean, how are you prepping for that? Um, Abigail, you got a you got a thought on that? Well, just reviewing a bit of past material that I haven't covered in a while. Like I just took most of my placement tests, so mm-hmm. I looked over algebra a bit, and I think just making sure to focus on time management once I get there. I think I'll do fine academically as long as I don't procrastinate. I yeah, think that's amen. the biggest. So, thing. so you mentioned the the summer leadership program. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit more about that. So it was a week program, and we started with a mock R day where they yelled at you. You're on a bus. They're telling you, look forward. Don't look out the window. Stop (laughs) smiling. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) All that fun stuff. And then after that day, it got a bit nicer. Your your sergeant actually talked to you, and um, you had kind of like classes while Uh you were there. Okay. You had PT in the morning. So it was just like a little sampler kind of of cadet life. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Rhea, wh- what do you think, what's some advice you can give for students, maybe Davison's age that are considering something like this or coming up through high school that um, you can offer? Well, really just um, don't think that you are not going to be able to do it. Like that's what held me back for those two years when I didn't apply to West Point like Mm -hmm. I wasn't confident in my ability to actually complete the program and it wasn't until later where I was like well all these other people are doing it like why can't I so I would say just look into it more like see what's there for you and never think that you're not going to be able to do it because you're going to be able to do it that is fantastic that's wonderful yeah what about you Jeffrey I'm sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, are, what are some things that you might be able to offer younger students coming up, maybe freshmen, sophomores in high school that are considering uh, this path? 
I would say that if you really want it, just to keep pursuing it and to keep driving for it. Because, like, for me, uh-huh. you know, like, there were some times where I was just like, you know, I really don't want to do this. Like, I really don't want to write this essay. Or, like, I really don't want to go, you know, like, interview this congressman or something like that. And, like, I would just be nervous. Like, I'd just be too tired. Mm-hmm. But, like, ultimately, like, it was just so worth it in the end. Like, just the end goal was so much better than just, like, all that, you okay. know, junk. And do you I guys think... have video of when you were, were accepted and you freaked out like they you know like are they doing social media no no i got a, i got a call from mr riz though, that's how i figured out and i ran to my mom actually as soon as i ended the call I and she was it. really I'm happy in, I'm in. Oh my God. i thought that was I'm wow in. yeah that was great yeah, that was cool. nice. that's, the, that's the most fun part of what i do really yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. when i get to do it i don't i don't always get to do that because the, the congressman and they they want to do that themselves but in, okay. his, in his case i was able to so that is fantastic yeah so, that is a joyous experience mm-hmm. so, so. something i'd like to say to anyone that might be listening i'm already working with a couple of freshmen and some sophomores um and and what what ria said is really true if you really have the the wherewithal and the if if you can put together the record you need to get in yeah you can do what they're going to put you through when you get there well let's talk a little bit more about about that that yeah let's talk yeah when we come back from break let's talk a little bit more about that you're listening to putting the pieces back together presented by purple heart homes we're joined by matt reyes and a cast of cadets heading to West Point. We'll be back in three minutes. Well, welcome back to Putting the Pieces Back Together, presented by Purple Heart Homes. You can find out more about us at phhusa.org. You're listening live on WSIC, but you may be listening later or watching on YouTube or Spotify if you're doing that. Thank you so much. Remember to hit that little bell icon. Right. <laughs> yeah, and thank you, You're Durant, for Durant, or Durant, know, for thanks, Durant. doing this for us. Yeah, um, we're joined by uh, Matt Reyes. Uh, Matt's a uh, West Point graduate, an Army veteran. Uh, unfortunately, he chose um, <laughs> he chose artillery as his career path, and uh, but we forgive him for that. And uh, but he's also uh, we're also joined by some fine young people uh, that are headed to West Point. And, and Matt, uh, the question that we have is maybe for those listening, maybe there's some parents listening or some students listening out there. What in the world does it take to get uh, an, an, uh, this opportunity to go to West Point? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, first, let me say, Brad, that you you know that the mission of the infantry is to pull security for the infantry. <laughs> so, I think the infantry guys always said everything else is just support. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so you know, West Point. You know, I think I think everyone um, that wants to go to college shows up in high school wanting to do the best they can possibly do. And so um, really getting into West Point is kind of tailoring what you're doing in high school to meet the requirements of West Point. And I'm working right now with some freshmen and sophomores even Mm -hmm. that have decided they want a service academy. Mm -hmm. um, And that's what they want to do. And they're working on their record. And I would say there's several things that go into that. Obviously, good grades is something. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, if you can if you can hover close to the 4.0 range, that's going to serve you well. Um, You know, take take the hardest classes you can take, but you don't have to take all the all the hardest classes um, and just do well in all those classes that you do take. Um, Every athlete is a cadet and every cadet is an athlete is what we say up at West Point. Um, So you should be playing sports. Most people that go to West Point are varsity letter winners. Um, so you should be engaged in some kind of athletic activity, preferably a team sport. You know, like to see my, that. my buddy, Mike Sullivan, who I served with uh, on active duty, he, both his kids, he had twins that they both went to West Point. And his daughter, Samantha, um, she got on the West Point rugby team. And now she's an Army officer, but she plays for the U.S. national team. Yeah. Wow. And she plays all over the world. And she's a beast. I would not want her to hit me at all she's got a very angry face when she plays yeah and she's a delightful young lady but man on the field she is uh she's a terror absolutely and mike sullivan is my classmate no kidding are you kidding me no kidding (laughs) yeah really that is fantastic man what a great guy man yeah he's a he's an awesome guy um military leadership really anything that you're doing as an activity i would say i would say to a high school student pick some activity that you're just passionate about and seek to lead in it yeah. it's really that simple so if you're going to be on the yearbook staff 
well be the leader of the yearbook staff right um if you think you might enjoy being the class president then run for it mm -hmm. you know get involved in get involved in student government and run for class president my son was a class president um he just decided to run mm -hmm. um so and west point wants to see on your record the ability to lead others yeah. At, at, at an early age and it's not as difficult as you would think so if you get into national honor society there's leadership positions there if you play a sport you can be a team captain yeah. um, all those things equal leadership and they actually the way west point does admissions is they all add up to points hmm. um, oh, there's okay. a couple of different ways you could be admitted and that's one of them you can compete off the national waiting list and and get in and the these three they all three had different paths mm -hmm. that they, they might not even realize it but they had different paths that got them in and you know but it started with their record it started with <clears throat> building building a, a solid record in high school and just being willing to take some risks maybe and do some things that you might not have otherwise done well and because when you become an army officer uh, you're gonna there's gonna be uh, measured risk that you're gonna have to take uh, as a Definitely. leader uh, throughout your entire career yeah. um, and and the people that serve under you are depending on your decision making um, and you're gonna be putting people at risk so uh, being able to train yourself to to accept the possibility of failure and all, all the things that risk brings uh, is a really good training ground uh, when you're a teenager so that's awesome absolutely what, what kind of leadership skills or leadership roles did you guys have in school um, so I helped run two clubs I helped well I created a jewelry club and I also created girl supply club okay um, I also helped a lot on the cheer team. Okay. I was not a team captain, but mm -hmm. for the cheer team, a lot of the seniors worked together to help lead and coach and instruct the new girls. Mentor. Yeah, okay. so I helped with that a lot. Awesome. And then on track and field, I was an event group leader okay. for uh, the throwing section. Very right. good. What about you? Gia <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, so during um, d during field artillery school um, and also during basic, I was something called a PG, which is a platoon guide, oh, and um, okay. that's kind of um, that's kind of like the leadership position that they're trying to put you in. Like they'll they'll try and put you in leadership leadership positions when you're at basic and AIT, just so you can get a feel for it. And um, really, I just I would. I would make sure everyone was squared away, mm -hmm. like so squared that means <laughs> that just means everyone like just everyone looks presentable and all that, um, and really just you kind of you kind of you kind of ask for it. You you ask to be put in that leadership position, and then they'll put you in it. Um, that's that's really I'm glad you said that because mm -hmm. a lot of times people, you know, especially teenagers, want roles like that, but they don't know how to get there. Mm. And I always try to tell the kids that I mentor, ask for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Ask, you never know what you're going to get unless mm -hmm. you ask for it. And what's the worst that could happen? Totally. They could say no. And you yeah. just keep working harder for it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, Jeffrey? What kind of leadership roles did you play? So I like to start off with um, my card games club <laughs> I created this year. Okay. That's my that's one of my favorites. But, like um, poker? Yeah. Well, not really. Not. I'd Watch say more out. like more like... Go fish, maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, don't, okay. I don't know, just That's a different cool. assortment of things. But um, yeah, beyond that, uh, I was I was captain for my varsity football team, record breaking actually. We did really well this year. Oh, congratulations! congratulations. Yeah, first uh, first ever uh, tournament playoff win. Okay, yeah, that was real nice. Very good. Only problem is Way I to tore my ACL that game. So uh, oh. or no no I didn't tear my ACL that game. I tore my tore my ACL the next game, yeah. and I couldn't really play any other sports. But what I did do is I um I team manage for the basketball team. Because that was my favorite sport, basketball. Okay. And then I ended up taking pictures for the lacrosse team, and I was just I was just with everyone and all my friends, and just everyone everyone helping everyone out, and okay. just like you know, I just like that. It was real fun. That's right. fantastic. I love that. Yeah. I love yeah. that. So, who has career goals? Like, you are you focused? Are, are any of you focused on a career that you're that you're trying to get to through this path? I mean, like. Army wise, yeah. I mean, I know I wanna, yeah. I know I wanna. I'm thinking about going aviation as a branch. All right. Um, that's it's not field artillery, but <laughs> <laughs> dad's over here like going. You can fly the howitzers around. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is something that you do. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, Jeffrey, have you thought about uh, maybe what you want to do? Uh, 
post uh, West Point, you know, what, what branch you want to go to? Branch wise, I'm not really sure. I'm still really deciding that. But like in terms of just like what I want to do beyond that, I think I want to go into some type of engineering. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking more like civil, c- civil or like um, computer. Sounds mm-hmm. real fun. Okay. But um, yeah, I'm just looking to see where West Point takes me. Yeah. See awesome. what happens with that. Yeah. What about you, Abigail? I would say the same as Jeffrey. I don't really have a set branch. I'm interested in military intelligence. Not sure yet, but. Like Jeffrey said, I'm just really excited to see where West Point will take me. Yeah, that's okay. fantastic. That is fantastic. Very impressed with you yeah. guys. Absolutely. Hey, something, something. if I could add to that. Please. What they just did, said. If, if you listened, you heard, well, I'm, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. And sometimes young people feel like, well, in order to do something like West Point, I have to, you know, I have to really want to be like career military and already have it mapped out. And the reality is, is that's not, that's not realistic. There's a very small percentage of candidates that I come across that are like that. Most people have a, have an openness to serve. They want to serve the country. They're not sure what field or what branch yet, or even what major. Mm -hmm. And they go on and do, they find their way. They find their path. That's, what's, that's what's the interesting. Per, yeah, what's the percentage of West Point graduates that go on and serve as a, in a career? It's right? a small, in, it's that's a what small I thought. percentage. Yeah. It's a small yeah. percentage that go, um, you know, you, you'd have a percentage that goes to five years active and mm-hmm. three years reserve or or National Guard. Yeah, and five years is your commitment, right? Five years is your active duty commitment. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But the but the percentage that goes on to you know twenty plus years, yeah. Um, I I don't want to quote a number because I don't sure. know what, exactly what that number is, but it's a small percentage. Yeah. Um, what were uh, some? Obviously, there's some challenges that come along with uh, um, going to a school like West Point. What were some of the challenges that you faced? Great oh, question. So one, the biggest thing for me was getting used to being away from home. Mm. Honestly, when yeah. I first showed up at West Point, I had not, I'd been to summer camp, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's summer camp, you're gone for a week or two weeks and then you go home. Right. Yeah. So, um, but, but that gap was filled with the regimentation. You know, mm-hmm. I really, really liked the, the scheduled nature, but, but, you know, being away from home was, was a big thing, but I found that my, my high school, preparation and the sports I played and the activities that I participated in had prepared me pretty well yeah. for what for what they had at West Point. The physical part was it wasn't easy, but it was I was ready to do it. Um, the military part I really took to. And when the academic year hit, that that was that took some getting used to. Mm-hmm. Really took some getting used to. And and that makes me think of another thing. You know, right now Typically, uh, someone that gets into West Point is the top of their class. Yeah. You know, they're the top of the class and the football team captain, you know, and when they walk down the hall, it's like, man, that's, that's Matt. Right. <laughs> right. Right. When you show up at West Point, Everybody everyone's is. like that. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. So, so you got – and, and if that's, if that's um, intimidating to you, like you feel that right away, what I felt was different. I felt completely like, man – I'm 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 among the best of the best. I got people here from overseas that are coming to to study at West Point and go back to their country to be to be officers in their armies. Mm-hmm. That's a really cool thing um, yeah. when you really realize who you're among. You're yeah. you're among some greatness. And the history of West Point, I mean it goes back a long long way. Totally. I mean, yeah, totally. Back, yeah, early 1800s, right? 1802. Uh, yeah, that's wow, what I thought. 1802. Eight, yep. Yeah. That is unbelievable. Yeah, over 200 years now I've been training up the next generation of officers and leaders in the U.S. Army. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, Yeah, and one day you, all you guys will be mentors, hopefully, for, for kids who are, you know, looking to do that. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, we're really happy to have you guys doing that. Yeah. yeah so, so, you know, I've 12, so it's been um, 11 years, I think it is. And it's amazing. So, so now I've helped people that have gone and graduated. Mm-hmm. And... It's amazing the network that's mm-hmm. that's created yes. with with people that are just so willing to help because that's part of what you get that's part of what you learn really um, and yeah. those kids right now at Lake Norman High School and um, South Iredell High School uh, over in Taylorsville there's Alexander Central yeah mm-hmm. there's several graduates from Davy High School over in Moxville and they're all so willing to come back and talk to kids and help them help them with their application you name it so. 
Yeah. It's, it's a really awesome thing that's being created. So anyone that's out there that's even thinking about it, reach out. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to ask you, the next, that's what, that was my next question. For these kids that are listening or are interested, how would they get in touch with you? What is their, their first step in, in taking that journey? They should call me or send me a text. Okay. 704-929-0653. Okay. All right. That's, that's, that's awesome. So if you want to get in touch with Matt and you want to find out more about West Point, you can just send him a text. We'll put that uh, uh, we'll put that out on our Facebook feed, and and uh, so folks can uh, reach out to you. Uh, maybe there's somebody you know goes to States of Ohio or, or South Idol or North Idol that's trying to um, you know going, hey, I may, maybe I'm, I'm I'm pretty good at what I do, and and uh, could be something that uh, really helps me um, get to the place that I want to be. And speaking of that, Matt, um, how did how did your Army service, your West Point education, how did that inform your civilian uh, career? Yeah, so there isn't a day that goes by where I don't think of some aspect of what what I learned at both at West Point and as an officer in the Army that affects what I do on a day to day basis. It's yeah. it's a daily it's a daily occurrence. Um, I, I went into I went into corporate America and then went into real estate twenty years ago. And so how I operate, how I deal with clients, how I do what I do on a day-to-day basis, it, a lot, the decisions I make all go back to that because that's really what formed me at a young age. That's awesome. So, it's a life, life discipline. It's a yeah. life discipline, totally. Yeah. Well, we got a couple minutes before we end the show. I'd like to end with this um, with our uh, young budding cadets. Um, what are you looking forward to most, Abigail? I think just all the opportunities that await at West Point and all the new people and connections I'm going to make while I'm there. That's awesome. All right. GI, what are you <laughs> looking forward to? Uh, well, like I said, the the people, like yeah. really just everyone there, the energy level, I'm really looking forward to awesome. being around that. All right. Jeffrey. Um, I'm looking forward to making a lot, new, a lot more new friends because there's just kids from like all around the country. Yeah. And like it's just like new faces everywhere, and like they're all like the same kind of like athlete, I guess I could say that I am. Yeah. And just like to see everyone like together and struggling through the same thing, I think it'll be a real bonding experience for all of us, and I'm really excited to experience that. That is fantastic. Well, I can say that I am so proud of you yes. guys, and so honored to meet you and hear a little bit of your story. And as a mom, um, it makes me very hopeful for the future of our country. So yeah. thank you. Thanks for being here, guys. We really appreciate Thanks it. Next week, we have the illustrious Pat Shannon joining us. You don't want to miss that. It's going to be fantastic. Thank you for listening to Putting the Pieces Back Together today. And we'll see you next week. All righty. Have a great one. You've been listening to Putting the Pieces Back Together with John Galena and Brad Borders. Join us again next Tuesday at 8 a.m. and Saturday at 5 p.m. for Putting the Pieces Back Together on News Talk WSIC.